Hey, y'all, it's Hans. Welcome back again this week. So we've got a big review. Again, it seems like every week we've got a big review, but we've got the Bearing Optics Super Hogster. Now, uh, we've already talked about the Hogster 25 millimeter, the 35 millimeter, and this is the final one in the series of uh, Bearing Optics Hogster thermal scopes that we're going to be doing. Now, uh, I do anticipate on down the road throughout 2021, we may have some more stuff to talk about, but to, to round out the year of 2020, um, man, this has been uh, a scope that's gotten a lot of attention. If you've seen anything on any of the social medias uh, talking about the Bearing Optics Super Hawkster or, or any of the other Hawksters, it's been overwhelmingly positive. So uh, I know I just put out the video of the first hunts um, not that long ago with the Super Hawkster. I've also put out the reviews of the 25 millimeter and the 35 millimeter. I actually combined those two videos because there's a lot of similarities. Uh, but in this review video, you're going to get to see a lot of uh, thermal video through this optic uh, as well. We're going to talk about the differences between the three Hogster models that have been released. So uh, as always, if you're interested in purchasing any night vision or thermal scope, uh, hop onto the website, outdoorlegacygear.com. You can call 877-350-1818. Talk to Jason. Uh, you can talk to myself, uh, our office manager, Michaela. Uh, you can talk to any of us, but we'd love to get your business and thank you for uh, thinking of us. Now also, Thank you for checking out our weekly podcast, The Late Night Vision Show, which can be found on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, anywhere, podcast, audio, uh, only versions on any of the platforms, and also YouTube. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort into producing those videos for you, but it's all about all the equipment that you see here uh, on the Hans East Texas uh, YouTube channel. So jumping right into it, this is the Super Hawkster by Bearing Optics. We're going to go over the specs right now, talk a little bit about functionality, uh, we're going to talk about comparison between this and the other two uh, Hogster models and also the likes and dislikes. So the specifications on it, uh, the price, we'll start with the price, $3,120. Magnification goes from 2.9 power to 11.6 power. The re resolution is uh, 384. It is a 12 micron unit, 50 hertz refresh rate. Uh, it does run on two CR123 batteries, but you can also... Uh, it comes with a cord, a plug that goes into, uh, you can use it with an external battery pack. So any, any type of external battery pack that you would use to charge anything from cell phones to whatever you can plug in there for extended, uh, battery life. But out of the two CR123 batteries, I'd say you're going to get about three and a half hours of runtime, uh, depending on how cold or how warm it is outside. But I'd count on three and a half to four hours of runtime. It does come, uh, with a, one throw lever QD mount and uh, it's, you know, it works very well. I've tested it, sighted in the rifle, I've taken it off, put it back on. It does return to zero. So the mount's good and it does come with it. So it's not an additional accessory that you have to purchase. Um, it does have multiple, multiple reticle options, multiple color palette options uh, and all the bearing optic stuff comes with a four year warranty, which is a, a very, very generous warranty, manufacturer warranty. So, um, going over the scope and the layout, you got a plastic lens cap on it, which is nice. Uh, I like that a lot better than the rubber ones that, uh, come on the 25 millimeter has an, uh, a focusable objective lens, focusable eyepiece diopter right here, three button layout, ambidextrous design on top. Uh, obviously you've got your, uh, your, your plug out on this side for your external battery pack. It does have internal video recording. It does not record audio. Uh, so if you see any of my videos uh, that I've produced with the super Hulkster, uh, that is me syncing the audio with it. Um, you know, I think, uh, there's a lot of people out there that, um, you know, really all they care about is the internal video recording the audio. It, it only, is a, a negative to people like me that are creating content. It's an extra step uh, of something that we have to do, but not really that big of a deal. As you can see, this is this thermal scope is very small. A lot of people are calling up and say, you know, hey, this is a great buddy scope for me or a primary scope, but I can also use it as a monocular because it's small enough uh, to hold and you know hold and swivel around. It's not heavy. It's not very big, and uh, you know, I think it's. It's a good design for that too. Great buddy, uh, buddy scope. If you already got a, a thermal scope, backup scope, uh, thermal monocular, or if this is your primary scope, it's all good option. Now, the I would say 
let's talk about a little bit about the menu. Um, and we'll also talk about ID ranges, the menu on it. Um, it is not my favorite. <laughs> the menu is, is, uh, once you get used to it, it's fine. You'll be able to do exactly what you need to do. You, you won't have to get in there and mess with, mess with it very often. But one thing I did notice is that when you turn, uh, the thermal scope on, it always defaults back to white hot. Uh, I like to shoot in black hot, so I have to go in and manually change it every time. So it does default to white hot. Um, again, not that big of a deal, but the menu, it is uh, it is designed in a way that it could have used a little bit more, uh, you know, user friendliness, I would say. Uh, but other than that, like I said, you get used to it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, if, if that's the only problem with a thermal scope, then a thermal scope's doing pretty good. The image quality on it's very good. Uh, you can see the videos. I'd say as far as, uh, you know, ID ranges and shooting ranges, um, you know, I was able to ID hogs, um, out to 400 yards. Uh, I'm not going to say that that's going to be the case for everybody, but I, you know, three, 400 yards, I don't think is going to be a problem at all. Uh, with this, you know, this is a uh, a 2.9, basically a three power base magnification. So it's got fairly uh, higher base magnification than some of the other thermals out there. So it does help you with that longer ID ranges and the picture on it on the base magnification is very good. I think, uh, you know, as far as my likes, and, and I'll go through those fairly quick, very good picture image, uh, very small in size, lightweight, you don't feel it on the rifle. Uh, I like the fact that it has the internal video recording, which is a big bonus for a lot of people. I love the price. 3120 for such a good optic is very good. I think this is a very good buy. Um, and I think if you, if you're like anybody else that's called us up and have been asking about this thermal scope, uh, people are going crazy over it. They're selling sooner than they can come in. But right now, um, the best thing to do is just call and check in, see if there's one, if not get put on a list because, uh, these are coming in pretty regularly right now. So the inventory on has been pretty good. Uh, the differences, let's talk about the difference between the super Hulkster and the 25 millimeter and the 35 millimeter. There's not a, a lot of difference, um, other than the magnification. So the 25 millimeters of 1.4 power, the 35 millimeter, uh, is right out of two power. This is a 2.9 power, the Super Hogster. So a little bit more magnification. It's got a 35 millimeter objective lens, which is same is the same as the 35 millimeter. Uh, the Hogster R35 millimeter, and this one has the internal video recording. This is the only one of the three that has the internal video recording. So, really, to tell you the truth, that's the only difference. They're all 384 resolution um, thermal cores. They're all 50 hertz refresh rate. The the battery setup is exactly the same. Same mount. Uh, pretty much the same size other than the 25 millimeter has a smaller objective lens. So there's not really that big of a difference. The 25 millimeter is 2295. Uh, the 35 millimeter is 2675 and this one's 3,120. So, uh, it's very similar specs. Uh, a little bit, you know, the, the prices are, are pretty, you know, fairly evened out. So I think it's, uh, this is definitely a good buy. Now, what I will say, I've talked about my likes, talked about the ID ranges, the functionality. You're seeing a lot of videos right now. Uh, the dislikes that I have, uh, one is the menu, mm, not great, but usable. Um, I would say the other thing is the uh, image quality on the base magnification is very good. I mean, very crisp, very sharp. Uh, you know, some of the best that you'll see sometimes at this at this price range. What I will say though is whenever you zoom up the image or magnify the image, uh, it does seem to distort the image more than you will see with some other brands. I, I don't know why it is. I don't know if it's the firmware on there. Um, I don't know if it's the core, but for some reason, when you magnify the image, it seems to be a little bit more distorted than some of the others out there, but still usable. Uh, it's still, even with those two dislikes, I think it's still a really, really good buy any of the three Hogster models. Um, and you know, I think that you would be very good and very satisfied with something like this, the super Hogster. Um, so one thing to also notice, uh, or, or to mention, it does have picture in picture display. So if you magnify the image, um, or if you just want to keep it on that base of 2.9 and bring up the picture, picture, picture in picture function, 
Um, you probably heard about that. They call it the PIP, but that with the Pulsar units, all the Pulsar units have them as well. So this is the Bearing Optic Super Hulkster review. Uh, we've also gone over uh, the specs of the 25 millimeter and 35 millimeter Hulksters. Again, if you have any questions, please comment to this video. I appreciate you uh, checking out all the reviews. We've had a ton of reviews lately. We're just trying to crank them out as soon as we can. I've still got a, a pile of thermals that I've got to do reviews on. I'm, I'm going to be doing reviews on the the Axion XQ38, the the Axion XQ38 LRF. Um, you know, I've got the uh, Envision Knox 18. We've got the uh, Envision Knox um, uh, 35 coming out very soon as well. So we'll be doing reviews on all that. So I've got more and more reviews, and I'm trying to fit in all the hunting videos like I, like I normally do, and and just came out with the first hunts with the Bearing Optic Super Hawkster. So. If you have any questions, again, comment to this video. If you want to find this scope uh, or any other scope, check out OutdoorLegacyGear.com. You can call 877-350-1818. Thank you for watching and subscribing. Thank you for sharing. And we'll see you all next week. Stay safe in the fields. Keep making them bacon pancakes.